Welcome back to Next Gen Investing. It's now time for FOMO. Today we are looking at Netflix, which did touch all time highs. I know we've pulled off a bit here by about one and a half percent, which now we're lower on the session, which just really messed up my whole narrative about Netflix being really in line with the overall market. But nonetheless, we do have earnings to look forward to next week. So joining me more to discuss on this is Diane King Hall, senior markets correspondent for the network. So Diane, thank you so much for being here today. Walk us through all the analyst news, all the earnings expectations. There's a lot to get through when it comes to Netflix. I know. And I don't think, I think the FOMO uh, narrative still applies here. Like, yes, it may have pulled back some, but we still have a lot of day left. And, you know, we've seen, you know, a little bit of a pullback in the broader market momentum as well. So it kind of lines up. But here's what's going on. You do have bullish sentiment increasing when it comes to analyst outlook on Netflix. Guggenheim and Macri, latest uh, sell side analysts to boost their price target. Targets. Let's start with Macri. They've raised their price target on Netflix to 795 bucks a share. They previously had a price target of 695. So obviously there is clearly some distance in, including where Netflix, Netflix's share price is today at around 724. Earlier it was a little higher than that. Uh, they talked about they are also maintaining an outperform rating on Netflix. Here's where their thesis lies. They talked about the ad market. They said it appears solid for Netflix with ad agency organic growth averaging 3% in Q3. They say they think that will support modest improvement in linear TV ad revenues. Um, and the confidence, though, in Netflix's ad tier in the long term, boosted by, we've talked about this before, they've added more sports content to their content wheelhouse and that's been a big part of how Netflix has increased its momentum this year. All right, let's dive into the note from Guggenheim. Guggenheim boosting its price target on Netflix to 810 bucks a share. They previously had 735 bucks a share as their target. They are maintaining a buy rating on the stock. Uh, they talked about just more subscriber growth, more member growth potential. They see there is uh, room for growth there. Um, they also talked about ad revenue. They think that will increase uh, and that we'll see more there. Uh, and then margin expansion. They are expecting to see greater margin expansion. Uh, they do think member trends are actually going to be the critical driver uh, for Netflix. And they've raised their view on member ads. And they think that th what we're seeing in terms of overall sell side expectations um, of 4.4 million. That's the expectation on the sell side. The buy side has a higher expectation and they think that that may be getting it more correct. You know what else, uh, Diane? I know this is called FOMO because like the, the feeling you get mm. that you might miss the investment or things like that, kind of meme stock origins. This company and just what they do creates the feeling of FOMO. They have this like uncanny ability yep. to release content that goes viral and it's everywhere. And then they, they made it, uh, so you got hooked on it because they let everybody use one login. And then they said, oh, by the way, now that you're hooked on it and you love our content, we're actually not going to let you true. do that anymore. So now you have to buy your own and you can't share those passwords. So you got to tip your hat to them. They, they really entered this space and revolutionized it. They did. And a lot of people originally thought that password crackdown would be difficult. It's proved to be not as difficult as expected in terms of converting more subscribers. I will admit I'm actually one of the holdouts that still shares one. Um, I can't believe I just confessed that. But in general, if I if they do come for me, I will join the camp of having my own individual login. And so it's clearly worked in general. We won't I tell anybody. Different analysts pointing to that. <laughs> um, and then when you saw just in terms of their content recently, uh, some of the analyst call outs have been Squid Game 2 has been good for them. The sports uh, NFL uh, NFL activity on the platform has been good for Netflix as well. They've shown that they are a content powerhouse and that is be very beneficial to their growth, their subscriber momentum that they've had. Earnings we have to look forward to next Thursday, so less than a week away. Yeah, and I, Dan, I have to say that I also for a long time was somehow able to still, like, I know that the, the, the crackdown happened and like months later I got kicked off. So I was riding it out as long as I could. I mean, I, I don't blame you at all because yeah, I think I this world is expensive. You know, we got to take what we can get where we can get it. So yeah. I'm also in full agreement there. But we will be watching, of course, Netflix very closely. I will say I've recently been watching more Netflix and I, I'm impressed with the content. I think there's a reason I keep somehow coming back to it. But 
Dan King Hall, great breakdown as always, senior markets correspondent for the network.